like I can't really lay it out any other way than how it works for me. I'm really not trying to say this is the way that you should do it. Like I said, you, everyone has a unique way of coming at this, but I'm just giving you a little bit of a demonstration of how this works for me. And I hope it'll spark some thoughts and some questions for you to kind of go, hmm, well, how does that work for me? So for me, it's theme. I'll talk about it with my family and my friends. It'll be a question. I'll read about it. I'll be journaling about it, talking about it. Like I said, I put value on that time that I spend doing those things so that I'm not feeling like, oh, I'm not writing. Oh, I'm not writing. I'm not getting anything done. I put value on that time to do those things. Out of the theme, I get a character web, which is how the different characters in my story stand for different angles on my theme. So this would be like four corner opposition is John Truby's way of doing this. I've seen a little few other ways of character webbing, but it's not my protagonist's character arc. That's a little piece of it. It's, it's the conflicts between the characters and what the web and the world of the characters will be. Out of that, I start asking questions about structure. Okay, what's the end point? Which is coming out of my theme, right? And it's coming out of my character webs, how these characters are going to push and pull each other toward the end. What is the end point? What is the beginning point? What's the midpoint? Um, here I start seeing how the theme is gonna play out structurally, how the characters are gonna play out structurally, what the big scenes will be, which might inspire some research. The structure starts forming for everything. After the structure, which is the big picture pieces in place, you get even more ordered and even more specific on you, the genre. What are the tropes of the genre? What are the plot beats of plot beats of this particular genre that I need to hit to satisfy my audience? Coming more and more specific, and then it's after that that I flesh out the characters. And for me, fleshing out the characters is like character tactics, character motivations. Why do they get angry? What things make them angry? What things make them sad? If they're in this situation, how would they react? It's very, very, very specific questions about your character. There's all sorts of like tools and forms that go along with this development process. This is the crafting process of your story. Some people like filling out character questionnaires. Some people like five, um, five arc structure. Some people don't like to heavily, um, rely on their theme so much. This needs to be customized to you. What makes sense for you? How do you think? How do you work through these things? And so it's it's just an area to put put aside writing for a time. If you feel like this is where you're really, really struggling, put aside writing for a time and focus on this what would help me here what sounds interesting here what draws my attention what do i want to try um put some emphasis on your process for a little while instead of on your product because if you are only focused on the product what is going to happen is you will burn out that's that's what will happen but if you make the process something that you're working on, something that you love, something that you can find fulfillment in, you're, you're like you're never going to burn out. It's always going to be fun. It's always going to be new. And you run way, you run into that lack of motivation a lot less. I think there's a lot of downtime in development where you're just, you're just processing things and you're giving your brain space to come up with ideas but it has to be purposeful space. It can't just be, oh, now I'm going to play video games or I'm going to, you know, go hang out with my friends because then your brain's cluttered with what's happening. It's actually looking for stillness, giving yourself some space, people journal, people um, work out, people, you know, anything that's not mentally going to crowd your brain. Development is about bringing order to your thoughts and reflecting is about opening yourself up to new ideas and new thoughts.